Welcome one and all to the Defoe Show with Luby here on the Five Reading Sports Network brought to you by Water Cleanup of Florida. No one ever likes to deal with issues with their home or office. Leaks are the kind of issue, however, that you may not even know exists. You see a little stain here, there. You don't know what it is. Before it becomes a problem, reach out to Water Cleanup of Florida. They will make sure it goes away. 954-579-0356 for immediate assistance with over 60 years of combined experience between Michael Robert and their entire team. They are prepared for types, any type of leak detection issue, 24 hours a day, 365 days per year. They'll clean it, they'll dry it, they'll fully restore it. And because they're fully licensed, insured, and certified, they will be able to make it look brand new, all one company handling the entire issue. Don't go to a bunch of different places. Go to one place, Water Cleanup of Florida. They will make your life so much easier when it comes to leak issues or leak detection before they become issues. They service Miami, Broward, and Palm Beach counties. Check them out, 954-579-0356, 954-579-0356. And visit the website, wcufl.com. Also, check them out on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Water Cleanup FL Plus with over 70, over 70 five-star reviews on Google. That will not only take what I said, that will give you some confirmation there. Water Cleanup of Florida, if you have the schmutz, they have the guts. And the Miami Dolphins, talking about guts, the Miami Dolphins had a lot of guts. Sunday got down by three scores twice to the Baltimore Ravens. We're down three scores to start the fourth quarter before the one and only Tua Tagovailoa with his partners in crime, Tyreek Hill, Dylan Waddle, and then the defense woke up to help the Miami Dolphins on to a fourth quarter comeback victory. We talked a lot about it today with uh, NFL agent Brett Tesler and also the one and only John Congemi, who uh, is a Dolphins insider with CBS4. He's been a insider for a long time. He's covered college football. We talked Lots of Dolphins today on the Devo Show with Luby right here on the Five Reasons Sports Network. We welcome to the show, and this is always great, and brought to you by a will and trust attorney and estate planner, Mr. Michael D. Weil. We welcome to the program the agent of the stars, uh, Mr. Brett Tesler. Uh, Brett, how are you, my friend? Doing excellent, guys. Thank you. Morning, morning, morning. Well, I mean, I, I don't. You had an interest in more than just the Dolphin game. I mean, uh, you live here in town, and uh, you know, have clients on the Dolphins, and have had clients on the Dolphins. In fact, your original guy, Trent Gamble, was a, a Miami Dolphin. So, uh, I'm sure uh, because of your ties to South Florida, uh, it, you have a special place, you know, reserved for them when it comes to winning and feeling good about it. But uh, have you ever seen anything like this? I mean, are, are we going to say this every week now with the National Football League? As, uh, as exciting as college football was over the weekend, and there were a lot of interesting things that happened there. I mean, who could talk about anything but uh, what transpired yesterday in the NFL? I mean, wild finishes all over the place. And, I mean, uh, two weeks into it, uh, very much in the spotlight. Uh, ha- have you seen a week like this, though, where, where you had that many games that, that were just, star- you know, I mean, uh, one in startling fashion, uh, like like the Miami Dolphins game, Jets game uh, over the uh, Cleveland Browns, which I, I know you have a little bit of an attachment to. Cowboys. And uh, you had the wild finish in the Dallas game and then Arizona coming back from 20 nothing down at halftime. <laughs> Don't know that I've ever seen anything like it, Brett. Yeah, no, I had players involved in every one of those games you just <laughs> mentioned. And some guys in the end were very happy and other guys were very unhappy. And the league has changed. You know, you didn't see these type of things happen. 20 years ago, if a team had a big lead coming into the fourth quarter with the style of, of, of NFL football at that point and uh, differences in rules and officiating, things like that, it almost didn't allow uh, these type of comebacks that you're talking about right now to happen. And I don't know whether I like it or don't like it. Um, Obviously, I feel like the league at, at, at the office level has tinkered with the game to try to make every single game come down to the last minute to try to keep eyes on the game. Uh, and, and you wonder how much of that is uh, uh, something that happens um, uh, on, on, on a natural level. And how much of it, again, becomes an officiating thing. Because on any given play, 
if an official wants to call a, you know, 40 yard pass interference call, it can be done. You know I mean? There's, there's ways that games can be changed at any time. And, um, you know, back in the day, it was more of a running style of a game. There wasn't flags flying all over the place like there is now. There wasn't all these suspicious ticky tack type calls. So that all plays a factor into it. I mean, the league clearly wants every team to be about, you know, eight and eight when the season's over, it seems. You see so many teams that are sort of in that range. Well, not with 17 games, nine and, uh, not nine and, um, nine and eight or eight and nine. You'll see a ton of teams in that range. It just seems like that's the way things are going these days, and that's the way the game has changed. So, yeah, as far as that Dolphins game yesterday, it 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 it, it provided the opportunity for what happened to happen, and obviously uh, the Dolphins receivers did a spectacular job of getting open. I mean, Waddle is just you know really emerging as one of the very best of the best, and Tyreek, you know. I think a lot of people may have felt like the Dolphins overpaid for him, both in terms of uh, draft compensation and money. But, I mean, I'll tell you right now, if he can make the difference for this offense like he did yesterday, uh, he's going to be worth every penny and more. Well, and in terms of excitement also, uh, Boss, uh, you know, I mean, the common theory was, uh, you know, here's Tua with his proving ground year. Uh, a lot of question marks about him, and there may still be some, even though he threw for six touchdown passes yesterday. I, I don't know if he's going to be able to repeat that. And, uh, you know, I could hear the cynics because uh, you had Tyreek Hill had to kind of, you know, wait a second for that first touchdown pass in the fourth quarter. And, uh, you know, the defense almost caught up with a guy who was wide open, uh, slightly underthrown, I guess you would say that ball was. And the second one he kind of stopped for also, but he was so wide open. Uh, it couldn't miss it, but um, is this enough, Brett Tesser, in your mind? Uh, you, you've kind of been a proponent uh, of Tua Tagovailoa. I, I don't know how you felt about him after week number one. Seemed uh, like all of the suspicions people had about uh, him, uh, you know, unfortunately being a very flawed quarterback, if you're counting on him to be a franchise quarterback, uh, kind of arose again. Uh, did this wipe the slate clean? Was this an etch-a-sketch for Tua at this ball game? Did, did you see this as – a time where finally people would say, well, you know what? He may have a bad game or two down the road, but we know he has the goods to be a franchise and an established winning quarterback. I mean, looking at the stat sheet, it certainly wiped the slate clean, and, and, and especially with the most important stat, which is the W. Uh, but the reality is, I mean, look, you know, every player in every game, no matter how great of a game um just the average fan may think a running back has. <clears throat> if he ends up putting up 130, 150 yards, there may be a few other plays where they left a lot of meat on the bones, so to speak. And, you know, there's things you want to see out of a quarterback in terms of hitting receivers in stride, you know, leading guys forward, being able to put, put balls in tight windows, being able to make quick decisions, being able to get rid of the ball quickly, being able to get it downfield in a hurry with zip. These are the things that as the season goes on, especially in the AFC East, which is one of the toughest weather divisions when you're going up north later in the season to play in New York, uh, New England, places like that, you know, Buffalo. Uh, these, these are uh, things where, um, you know, as the season goes on, clearly if Tua continues to put up statistics similar to what we saw yesterday and the team continues to win, then of course, you know, he'll be the guy, but you just need to see how uh, things progress. You know, one thing about this league, you don't want to get too high after, you know, any given game. And you don't want to get too low after any given game. You know, with it being a 17-game season now, it's a longer season than it's ever been. Uh, yeah, it's still not baseball. There's not 160-plus of these things where, you know, any given game doesn't matter. But on the other hand, it's not like the old days where every game was life and death. So, you know, there's going to be weeks where something crazy happens that works out to your advantage like it did for the Dolphins this last weekend. And then there's going to be a week where it's the other way around, where maybe it looks like there's a game that they had in the palm of their hand. They should have won, could have won, and somehow or another, for whatever reason, it gets away. So, um, you know, you mentioned that Browns game yesterday, um, <clears throat> you know, missing an extra point to, to at least keep the game tied. Um, it's a pretty sickening game to lose when you're that far up in the fourth quarter. So, you know, I'm sure the Ravens are still going to be okay. They still figure to be a really, really good team. 
uh, could not have been more impressed by Lamar Jackson. And, uh, you know, that guy obviously is betting on himself and uh, providing that he stays healthy. It looks like it's a bet that's going to pay off handsomely for him. Brett, we've talked a lot about, the, the, look, the two guys we've talked about were Tua and Mike McDaniel, and it feels like their paths are connected because Mike McDaniel's connected them. Mike McDaniel time and time again has mentioned Tua. And it feels like a game like we saw yesterday or half we saw yesterday is sort of the kind of thing both those guys sort of need. Like Mike McDaniel is a guy that you, your client, a lot of people have spoken highly of, and we were wondering, okay, but how would he handle adversity? He's been beloved. He's been fun. Everyone adores this guy. Well, that half happened, and then I was like, well, here it is. And they came out like gangbusters. How bigger is a half like that for a young coach and a young quarterback at this stage in their career? It's huge, you know, just because, again, it, it's hard to win games in this league. I mean, no matter how much talent you have, I mean, there's a variety of factors that come into it. You know, the old adage on any given Sunday, I mean, you know, how long has that expression been around beef? I mean, 50 yeah. years longer. I mean, you know, that's as, 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 as I grew up as a fan of football, that was one of the things that you always heard. That was one of the mantras of the league, you know, and, and for reasons that we discussed earlier, I think that's even more so the case now than it's ever been. Uh, there's just so much talent out there. College kids these days are being prepared for this league more than ever, and not just at your Ohio State, Notre Dame, like the old days. Um, you've got talent coming out of pretty much any and every program out there. And so there's certainly no shortage of talented players in this league. So, um, you know, quarterback play has been pretty good. Uh, you know, so for these reasons, a lot of teams have a puncher's chance out there. I mean, you watch the Jaguars go out there and beat the Colts 24 uh, nothing. You know, you see uh, Trevor Lawrence just grossly outplaying Matt Ryan. I don't think that's anything anybody would have expected or, or should have expected, at least not to that degree. So, you know, this is the, the nature of the league today. So it's a wacky league from week to week. You're going to see a lot of exciting things happen. Um, some things are going to work out in your favor. Uh, some things are going to end up, you know, working out against you. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's what makes the sport fun. It's what makes the league as successful as it is. And so, yes, to answer your question, Luby, for a guy like McDaniel, this is a massive, massive test early on because you're going against a, a, a top defense here in Baltimore perennially. And so as a young offensive mind, you know, new head coach, this is a massive, massive test uh, going head-to-head -head with a guy like John Harbaugh, you know, one of the truly great head coaches of the current generation and a Super Bowl champion coach. And so a, a multiple-time Super Bowl champion coach, I think. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, it's, it's, it's huge anytime you can beat a former MVP, uh, a Super Bowl head coach, in a very, very difficult uh, home stadium in Baltimore. So definitely a huge, huge win, huge confidence builder, huge stepping stone for McDaniel, Tua, and the rest of the entire organization. Uh, you don't represent the defensive coordinator of the Ravens, do you? Because uh, well, whatever that was, <laughs> the defense that he had on Tyreek Hill, uh, where uh, you know the, the corner just lets him blow right past him as he goes to uh, protect against an out pattern and, there's nobody back there. <laughs> that that was uh, well, pretty wild. Though, the thing is, one touchdown pass. That was wild, but on the other hand, people would say, you know, you wouldn't want to represent the defensive coordinator who l let Lamar Jackson come right up the middle on a fourth down yeah. play for you know a, a very very long touchdown run in that oh, situation. Yeah. So, throughout the course of a game, things even out, and you know, there's things that work against you. There's things that work to your favor. And so you saw kind of all of that. It was a game of highs and lows. I mean, every emotion you could imagine, I'm sure every Dolphins fan felt in that game. And so for that reason, uh, it was exciting. And um, obviously, you know, as someone, as you mentioned earlier, who grew up down here, who went to these games with their parents when I was a little kid, uh, you know, it's neat to represent the starting running back on the team and a guy who uh, – had a really good game, nice almost day. had 100 total yards yesterday. Most of it. So, you know, it's, it's a fun time. And uh, hopefully for the uh, Dolphins and the fans down here and my client and my friends in the organization, 
uh, hopefully these guys keep it going. All right, we'll see what happens. Uh, another litmus test on tap as the uh, Dolphins uh, face the Buffalo, Buffalo Bills, Bills. <laughs> coming up next week. The Bills in action, uh, and they will play tonight. So we'll yes. see if they can uh, double down on the outstanding performance they had in week number one to open the season against the uh, Los Angeles Rams. It's always a pleasure to welcome this gentleman to the program, although uh, we've already experienced uh, various uh, sources of input here on the program. Uh, bitter disappointment by our female viewers and listeners that this man is not appearing on video. Because, uh, <laughs> he is the handsomest guy in South Florida and uh, does a dynamite job covering football, uh, very much entrenched in Dolphins coverage all over the television set. Doesn't matter what channel you turn on. I mean, you, you turn on Skip Bayless, and who's he debating? He's debating, uh, debating Kajemi. John Kajemi uh, <laughs> joins us here on the show, and uh, it's uh, formerly known as Dateline Dolphins, now uh, Kajemi's Pigskin Playbook. Yes. Brought to you by Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill, mile marker 104, Key Largo. I imagine they were dancing in the streets there. That would be some oh celebration. Jonathan, how are you? Where are you, my friend? I, I am uh... – Working my real job uh, somewhere in Fort Lauderdale. I'm not quite sure where I'm at, but um, the smile is so big on my face from yesterday's <laughs> win, it couldn't be projected on any type of screen today for yeah. me to, to appear. So uh, it, it, I don't know if it was shock or surprise or just a, a regular smile, but the, the Miami Dolphins uh, pulled one out uh, of the backside yesterday on the road against a team that. Uh, they have had difficulty defeating over the years. Well, and a lot of teams have had uh, trouble with the Baltimore Ravens, especially, uh, you know, obviously very solid at home. And, and they got a dynamite game. It's not like Lamar Jackson laid an egg yesterday. Because it's funny, uh, you know, we, we always discuss, well, there's a strategy to beat Lamar Jackson. And if the Dolphins were trying that strategy, it wasn't working because he was beating them like a drum. And uh, they found a way to turn it around. Uh, you know, we, we had talked about this. Uh, there's so many things come to mind, uh, John, especially after an exciting game like that, that, that kind of turned on the town. Uh, this town has been reluctant to embrace a lot of things about the team. Uh, you know, and they, they always seem to have these negative controversies like they did with Stephen Ross before the season started and the owner gets suspended and it looks like we're a mess. And uh, th this seemed to uh, turn a lot of people's heads in another direction. It's amazing what, what a win like that can do in terms of inspiration. Uh, I mean, uh, did you not feel like, especially, you know, I mean, you were uh, on, you know, various broadcast platforms. And I'm just looking at like social media response. Uh, you know, people are back in. They're buying back in. Uh, even if they get thumped by the bills, I, I think the Dolphins at least established that, that maybe there is reason to believe yesterday. You know, it's funny, Defoe and Luby, because 15 minutes before the game was over, I'm sitting in uh, WFOR studios and we're talking with some of uh, the behind the scenes people that are putting the show together. And yeah. somebody says, you know, I can't wait to see Twitter in 15 minutes, how brutal it's going to be because <laughs> the Dolphins are down 21 points yep. and it doesn't look like, you know, they're going to get the resurrection coming anytime soon again. Um, and it looks like Tua is going to, you know, be on the hook for a couple interceptions um, you know, the defense, Ugh. although they, they made a goal line stand, they were very good on third down, too many explosive plays. And then all of a sudden, uh, as you said, the, the embrace of, of what happened after that by social media fans, you know, Dolphin fans on, on, on that platform, or, or what's going to happen this week for the buildup to the Buffalo Bills game, no matter what the Bills do tonight, is going to be – uh, over the top. It's going to be something I think that's going to feel different for South Florida, that they haven't had this feeling in a while that and maybe we have a chance to have a, a really consistent team. Maybe we have a chance that we're as good as some of the other teams that we're trying to compare ourselves to. Tua, you know, answered a lot of the things that even I, that first half, I, I did a 180 that against him that I've had the whole time he's been here. Um, but he sort of assured me, of course, in that second half, he assured a lot of people. He answered some questions. I'm sure some questions will remain. What was bigger to me in that second half is Mike McDaniel because he's gotten this honeymoon period that has been pretty long for a Dolphins fan. He's been sort of beloved for a brand new guy. And that half, I'm sitting there going, all right, this is it, McDaniel. People have wondered, what are you going to do when the tough times come? 
We'll see. And they came out, and it was like they were one unit. And Because even the third quarter, yeah, the Ravens scored the touchdown, but the Dolphins did score two. And I felt like the tides had turned a little bit. And then that fourth quarter happened, and both sides of the ball were dominant. I mean, the Dolphins' defense was great in that fourth quarter, and the Dolphins' offense was spectacular. What does that do for a guy like Mike McDaniel when all the questions were how would he handle a tough time? He handled it with, like, gangbusters. Well, I think, Luby, that was my biggest question at training camp. Well, you know, I love his demeanor. I love the way he handles the media. I like the way he handles the team because he he can be, you know, one of the boys, and he also got on them in training camp when they had bad practices. So I like that edge about him, and he may do it in a new school way. It might not be an old school way, but I still think he gets his point across. Um, His answer – for, for South Florida was I think they're going to need a bigger wheelbarrow because <laughs> he, he, oh my God. he displayed confidence Oof. that you love to see as a, as a quarterback, as a defensive tackle, as a place kicker, uh, anybody on that team, you know, people filling the Gatorade bottles. They felt confident about what they were doing because he never wavered. He was the same guy on the sidelines, and he and he coached the same way. I mean, to anybody on their on their call list on their sheet to have a play called "Effort" and they ran it and it went for six. <laughs> yes, that, yes, yes, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So I, I think he kept his demeanor and he kept his swagger and he kept all the things that he is. And I think that's the guy. I I don't know if if uh, you know. A three-game losing streak, a a four-game winning streak. I don't know if it's going to deter how he does and what he does because I think he's got a plan and he's pretty pretty much going to stick to it. It's funny, too, because he keeps talking about, uh, well, we want to see how this team, he did it in week number one, uh, how this team uh, does when they're facing adversity. And uh, I keep uh, looking at that as another bizarre interpretation of uh, the old Coco Cameron uh, credo, which is let's fail forward fast, <laughs> which a dolphin certainly did yesterday. He, he was looking to test his mettle against yeah, adversity. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, yeah, well, one of the things that, that we didn't see a lot of last year was, uh, you know, you had uh, the Brian Florence to a kind of bottled up. And if the Dolphins were in a situation where, you know, you were thinking, oh, geez, that we're a little desperate here, he was even less likely to turn them loose. So that was kind of nice to see that they were willing to go in that direction. And on the other side of the field on the sidelines was John Harbaugh, a very accomplished coach yep. with a Super Bowl victory and a great reputation and a 900-game winning streak in the preseason uh, with a quarterback who was playing great. And uh, he looked like, I remember uh, one time we were playing golf at Broken Sound. You ever play the old course there, John? I would imagine you have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, now yeah, when you I were have. there, I mean, this is circa a long, you know, a while back. But uh, uh, I think, I don't know if Luby was with me, but we, we saw a, a Madoff victim <laughs> washed up in one of the canals there, <laughs> face down. And, and when we flipped the person over to see, you know, who it was, they, they had a very pale look on their face obviously decomposing and, and it looked like Harbaugh was in the same kind of shape as uh, this made off victim in the Creek at broken cell. I mean, he, he just reminded me of that because uh, he, he looks stunned as uh, you know, to all of these developments, which is surprising. Cause I mean, you're looking at a, a guy who's coached one game in the NFL versus, you know, one of, one of the real true and tried veteran coaches and, um, and McDaniel was getting the better of him. Well, I don't think that's ever happened to John Harbaugh. That's probably why you yeah. saw that look on his face. Yeah. I don't think that's happened to many coaches. Up 21 points twice, and to have uh, an offense that is providing explosive plays, special teams, you open up with a 103-yard kickoff return. Lamar Jackson has three first-half touchdown passes, 28 points in the first half. He had, Lamar had a perfect quarterback rating at halftime. Yep. I mean, yep. how yeah. can you not feel confident that you're going to win that game? You know, all you're thinking of is, you know, just don't screw it up. Yep. But the Dolphins were so aggressive on both sides of the football. I mean, everybody's talking about, and, and rightly so, two of six touchdown passes. You know, Jalen Waddle career highs and catches and yards and, and Hill the same way. Uh, I mean, they, they were outstanding. I don't think it's ever happened in NFL history where you had a quarterback throw for over, I think it was 400 yards plus, 
you had two receivers uh, that, you know, that go over 170 yards on the same team. I mean, it, it was unbelievable the things that happened. But the defense did it in the second half as well. I mean, Baltimore was only three of ten on third down, and they were one of three on fourth down. Everybody's thinking about the goal line stand, which was phenomenal. But when Harbaugh, I think, made a blunder going for it on fourth down, when you're just trying to make the Dolphins get first downs, you know, that takes maybe a couple more minutes off the clock if you punt that football and you stick the – The Dolphins, even if it's at the 15-yard line, they have to go another 35, 40 yards to get to where they are if you don't get the first down. And the tide was turning in that game. So let's credit the Dolphin defense as much as the accolades are going to be on the offensive side of the football. This defense did their job for 60 minutes as well. That was wild. I mean, if you think about it, uh, not only was the finish – as uh, scintillating as anything you could see. But, uh, you know, the the early drama of uh, trying to overcome uh, the kickoff return for a touchdown, I I, uh, sent a text to Luby. That was quick. (laughs) I I barely settled in with my first beer when, uh, you know, it was already 7-zip. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people missed that. And and then they had an 18-play drive that results in no points, which was amazing. And the Dolphins come back and, uh, you know, get, get into what a seven, seven tie, I think at that point, mm-hmm. uh, after mm-hmm. that, by scoring, you know, you know, lost in a euphoria, John Kajemi, uh, of, of this victory and the comeback from uh, 21 down going into the fourth quarter was the fact that the Ravens took the lead again, uh, late in the ball game with a field goal and, uh, looked like they were in a perfect position to win the game anyway. And so all, all of this uh, brilliance of the comeback would have been lost, uh, you know, but the parenthetical was the, uh, the Dolphins still had to overcome a deficit of three points in the final minute of the game with a, a closing drive. Well, you're right. I mean, they did it all, you know, the entire second half where they were able to come back and get some explosive plays. And again, you know, yesterday I'm, I'm watching the game. I'm in the studio. And as soon as I saw them, as soon as I saw the Dolphins make Baltimore settle for a field goal, I'm running to the, to the uh, set. And I said to the guys in there, I said, if, if they if they have to settle for a field goal, the Dolphins are going to win this game. And everybody's like, yeah, right. Give me 20 bucks. Put your money where oh, yeah. your mouth's at, you know? Oh, you made some money? And, and you Good know what? for you, John. They, yeah, nobody ponied up. I don't ever make money doing that. But <laughs> Those TV guys are cheap, it, it, man. They're big mouths, but cheap. <laughs> but, I mean, they came back and answered the bell again, which was incredible. And, that, and that's that mantra that the head coach, Mike McDaniel, has been, you know, Beating the drum to this team, play one play at a time. Forget about the last one, move on to the next one. It's easy to say, but very hard to do. And the Dolphins are, have been, you know, walking that walk. And I, I think that this is a very confident team. Is is as deep as you felt, and as low as you felt at certain times watching that game yesterday. That's how euphoric you felt when they came through on the yep. other end because yep. you didn't think it was going to happen again and it happened again. And then you said it to yourself, well, they can't do it. They can't do it again. They're not that good. <laughs> well, they yeah. did it again, you know? So it, it was a, it was a definitely a roller coaster type of a game and the Dolphins ended up, you know, finding a way to win. Those of us who were inclined to go ahead and take a shot at the uh, over on the uh, eight and a hook certainly felt good about that one. Because uh, uh, that, yeah, that was one of those, had to sort of yeah. start a steal, yeah. Well, you know what, and and I said all along in the beginning of this season, the Dolphins have to find a way to go two and two, and after their first four games, because they're going to get on a roll in the middle of this season. Now they may trip up one time, but they're going to get on a roll somehow to get to seven or eight wins, really, really in a hurry, at least seven. And then that back stretch yeah, tough. where you have, I think, uh, you know, four or five games on the road. I, I don't remember exactly what the number is, but it's something like yeah, it's that. It's ugly, yeah. But the Eagles, and they play, the Packers, they the play good teams. <laughs> yeah, they play some good teams. So now they've got a shot. I mean, Cincinnati's 0-2. They don't look like any world beaters, right? Nope. And the Buffalo no. Bills, they're, they're real. No. So, you know, you have a test against the Bills coming in on, on Sunday at Hard Rock. And then you go on a short week to uh, 
Paul, I think it's Paul Brown Stadium. I'm not sure what it is in Cincinnati. And they're going to play, you know, a team that went to the Super Bowl last year, but, but a team that's not riding high right now. Well, and it'll be interesting to see how the uh, Finns respond. Uh, we haven't seen Buffalo play yet this week. They have the Tennessee Titans tonight in a Monday night doubleheader. Uh, it couldn't have looked any better than they did against the Rams, who bounced back and won their second ball game, uh, although uh, it did get tight the at the Falcons. end there as uh, they gave up a bunch of points to the uh, lowly Atlanta Falcons. Yep. And uh, that game became uh, more of a scare than uh, a lot of people would have anticipated. Big thanks to NFL agent Brett Tesler for joining us today and John Jemmy for talking all things Dolphins. It was an exciting weekend for the Finns, not such an exciting weekend for the Canes. They went on the road to College Station to take on Texas A&M. Uh, it didn't seem like the greatest brand of football. Both teams offensively were nothing spectacular. Tyler Van Dyke sort of struggled with accuracy. Their, the defense did its job, you know, considering A&M's offense isn't really that good. But the Miami Dolphins, the Miami Dolphins got their win. The Canes did get take a tough loss, 17-9. to Did not get a touchdown, three field goals against Texas A&M. We will talk, I'm sure, more Canes as the week goes on. We'll talk a lot more Miami Dolphins as they are now 2-0 and and welcome the vaunted Super Bowl favorite Buffalo Bills to South Florida this weekend. If you want to check us out each and every day, you can do that 7 to 9 live, South Florida live. In the mornings, just look up YouTube, Google The Defoe Show with Luby. YouTube, Google South Florida Live. Check out our national podcast. Had a lot of fun last week talking lots of football and some basketball. The Believe Network, B-L-E-A-V.com. Search after hours. And most days right here are South Florida content, the Devo Show with the Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network. From the newly renovated sports bar to the beautiful bayside views captured at the Tiki Bar, Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill has it all. Located at mile marker 104, the Big Chill also offers waterfront dining while experiencing breathtaking sunset views of the Florida Keys. It's simply the hottest spot in the Keys to cool off. That's Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill at mile marker 104 in Key Largo. For more information, call today at 305-453-9066. These days, we're all looking for comfort anywhere we can find it. Thank goodness for Land Lovers, Raw Bar and Grill in the plantation because they are making sure you are as comfortable as possible. First of all, they're not only open for delivery and pickup, all you have to do is go to landloversbarandgrill.com for both pickup and free delivery. You're going to have the best wings in the world. You're going to have a great burger. You're going to have their amazing soups. Again, Land Lovers, Raw Bar and Grill. It's nice and easy. Just go to landloversbarandgrill.com for both your pickup and free delivery. Thank goodness for Land Lovers for making you always feel right at home. 